Good evening. Uh, just welcome to Mount Carmel Ministry. We will be here to, tonight to discuss the goodness of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And um, uh, welcome to our Wednesday night Bible study. And I will be uh, sending in for my pastor, Miss Deborah Dent. Uh, so, amen. Let's open up with prayer. Our Father who are in heaven, oh Father, we just come to you as humble as we know how. Father, we just come with thanksgiving in our hearts. And we, we just hear it just to talk about your goodness, talk about your grace. And what a blessing it is it just to see another day's journey. And Father, we just want to thank you for all, all the love that you continue to show us, both seen and unseen. And Father, we just thank you for just being a great and good God. Oh, Father, you are the creator of the whole universe. You are a God that has no beginning and no end. And I'm so proud and so honored to call you my father. And God, we ask for a blessing here tonight. We ask that you just bless what's going to be said here tonight. And Father, we ask that your Holy Spirit just intervene. Oh, Father, we just welcome him in tonight. And Father, we know that you watch us over your word, that we know that your word will accomplish that which you will send out to do. And Father, we just claim all the blessings and glory. And Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you for just giving us instructions, Father, for how we should live, how we should treat people, and also, Father, how we should represent you on this earth. And Father, and in your word, you promise us a, a home. You promise us a place because your son Jesus said that he go to prepare a place for us. That where he is, that we will also be. And Father, we just look forward to that day that we can just stand before you and see your face. And you say, serving well done. And we claim the blessing right now in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, tonight is a, a blessing. It always a blessing to get a special assignment from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Whenever He gives you an assignment to proclaim His Word and opportunity to speak His Word on His behalf, Amen. I think uh, tonight we're going to be uh, talking about the love that is within each and every one of us. You know, God, you know, because if we made in the image of God, and let me say if we made, let's say we are made in the image of God, then all that love that God has in his heart, he put that inside of us also. So there's a lot of love that's within us. I will be coming from 1 John, the 3rd chapter, uh, starting at the, uh, start at the 11th verse. Okay, and it reads, For this message, this is the message that you have heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother, and wherefore slew he him, because his own works were evil, and his brother's righteous. Marvel not, my brother, if the world hates you. We know that we have passed from death unto life, because we love the brother. He that loved not his brother abided in death. Whosoever hated his brother is a murderer, and yet know that no murder had eternal life abiding in him. Wherefore I perceive we the love of God, because he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brother. But whoso had this world's good 
and sees his brother have need and shed it up his bowels of compassion for him, I dreaded the love of God in him. My little children, let us not love in words, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. And hereby we know that we are of the truth and shall share our hearts before him. For if our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart and know us all things. Amen. May God have a blessing to hear and reading of his holy word. We're going to talk tonight about this love that is within us. Amen. So can anybody tell me where do love come from? I mean, what is this thing we call love? Okay, God. Okay. That's it. Oh, okay. The love I'm talking about, they come from God. Okay. That's right. So, but this love that come from God, how do we nurture it? By his word? Studying his word? Amen. Okay. We nurture it by studying his word and also by what? Getting to know him? All right? Oh, action. Because mm-hmm. we can always say, sister, I love you, and, go, and then pass on the highway, can't you? It's an action word, too. Just love. And then, are we only to love the people that love us? I mean, but don't the world love the people that love them? Yeah. Yeah. But then we're not like the people in the world, right? Uh, so we have to flip this script. See, we have to love people that don't even care nothing about us. That's right. That's right. Somebody hungry that you know that hates you, and then you got the means you know to feed them, you got to feed them. Because that's what our God do every day. People that deny him, hate him, but he still will take care of them. Amen. Mm. But how do we make it appear that, I mean, where it does not seem to be present. How do we make it appear where it don't even seem to be present? How do you make love appear when it don't seem to be present? You know, like in places, you know. Yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right. You know when people say it ain't no love here. If it's confusion or chaos and being your presence, like the pastor said, if it's your presence and your light and the love of Christ is changed <laughs> or, or being exemplified in all the in all the changes that environment that Amen. It, Think about this, uh, especially when we talk about light and love. You know, when God would send you on a job and then you go. When you go in that job, ain't nothing but chaos and confusion, and, and then and then people hate that you're there because you're a child of God. So, oh, we got to do right now. Oh, here come this goody two shoe. Here come, and then you should smile because that's the place that God sent you to shed light because there was no love there. You know I mean? But our notion of romance and emotional attachment often cause us to miss the reality of love in its essence. Like the pop song say, looking for love in all the wrong places, when it should not be difficult to locate. It's very easy to find love. 
All you got to do is look to God. That's your shining example. Look to what Jesus Christ has done for each and every one of us on the cross. That's the shining example. Amen? And then our social and cultural definition, however, make it difficult for us to really understand what love is about. As a result, it becomes even harder for us to find love. Within the church, we often find it hard to love one another. It is no different in the homes. Amen. We chaff against one another and struggle so often with issues that don't even must matter, don't even must amount to much. Because, because whenever you're having a whole lot of difficulty, disagreements, you know, it's, it's what uh, I call it's a deeper issue that's going on. You know, it's just like a tree have branches. And then on those branches, it's a lot of leaves. And then it's just a lot of times that we be dealing with or, you know, dealing with all of these leaves on the tree, but we never go to the root problem. And the root problem is typically hidden underground. And the root problem is always weighing up about the love in your heart. Think about whenever you see people who come out there, they hate God. Okay, why do you hate God? Well, God didn't save my mom. Okay? So you hurt because your mom, you know, you know, passed. So you hate, you blame God. So that's your reason to come out, you know, you. You see, it always a root going on. You see, a hurt. Amen? But, yeah, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Couple that's supposed to be, I say, joined together in love, mm -hmm. married, but then you have this domestic violence, though. And in a lot of cases, it ends in some, I mean, some serious harm. But a lot of times, somebody yeah. lose, lose their life, and you have to hurt somebody like that would be taking somebody's life and you're supposed to love. But a lot of times, you're taking the life of the children, too. That's right. Yeah. And somebody said that you always hurt the ones you love. You know? But, but then, wouldn't it be easier that if we were just around people who always agree with our ideals? Wouldn't it be easier if they always thought all jokes was funny? Or oh, they like the music that we like. Mm -hmm. They like what we like and dislike what we dislike. I mean, you know. Wouldn't it be so easier if people could be just like us and think like us? Wouldn't it be so easy to love those folks? <laughs> But, but see here, we always want to place all, place all responsibility, you know, on actions and stuff, you know, attitudes and reaction to others. But yet, that ain't the way God operates. And once again, we were made in the image of God. Right? Yeah, but it's not how love operates neither. We definitely want to be loved and admired by other, but the simple, not the basis for real love. What is real love? What is real love? The real love that means that you love somebody enough that you want the best for them, even if it ain't you. You know what I'm talking about? Now, that surpassed the love that we think, right? You know? This God that love, loves you so much that he loves you through it because you ain't even got sense enough to know what you're doing. Even if you don't even tell me, 
That's right. Yeah. He even loves us through all stupidity, all ignorance. I mean, it's almost like you are in the hospital on life support, and God is the life support, and you hate the person that got you on life support. That's ignorance. You don't know no better. Come on, Mike, you thinking. I'm trying to get you saying that a friend, a co-worker was talking the other week and he said something that he had heard in the sermon. I was trying to recall what he said. I think it was something like, don't hurt the heart that love you, the love, love the heart that hurts you. I think that he mm -hmm. I think that's what he said. And I was just thinking you talking about this love. Mm -hmm. yeah. But true love cannot begin on the shoulders of somebody else. True love begins within each and every one of us. Yeah, it begins with us. Because the more we understand and know our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, see, that love is in us. Because we could think about what he did on the cross. He must say, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And then it's just like, but Dick said, one moment you can get married and do all these vows, the next moment you're trying to kill each other. One day Jesus was going into Jerusalem, people saying Hosanna, throwing all kind of palms in front of him, and the next day he's saying kill him. But he still loved because they know not what they do. Because love looks at the big picture. You see? See, we as humans have a tendency to look at temporal things. You see what I'm talking about? But God looks at permanent things. Yeah, temporarily you could do this, but you don't get that right permanently. This is what you this what's gonna happen to you. Because if you go to hell, oh, that's permanent. It ain't no more, well, you know. Because I heard someone preach, he said, it's going to be a lot of people in hell having a Bible meeting. Or a prayer meeting. But it's going to be too late then. Okay? Okay. So, but... I learned a song sometime back. It said, I'm love, you are love. I, I can risk loving you for the one who knows me best, loves me the most. That is an essence of what John is getting to in this writing. God loved us. God has loved each one of us. God has overlooked questions of our sinfulness, our failure, or our lack of worthy, and loved us anyway. He overlooked my faults and he saw my need. Because he is love. It's not about us. Yeah. It's about him. That's right. Love and humanity. Yeah. That's right. And yet he makes it about us. He lets us know that I'm going to do what I'm doing because of me, yet you're going to benefit from it. Amen. And he doesn't make me. That's right. That's right. Amen. Come on, Pastor. Let's talk about this love. Do you love me? All right. Amen. <laughs> but, but when God just overlooked all stuff anyway, because it was God that loved us and and. 
within our own lives and experience the same love that we should lavish upon others. And then it's a lot of times, you know, we, you know, get confused to how that should look like when we talk about love, you know, others, especially ones that may have hurted us, ones that, you know, have, you know, say bad things, you know, about us. But when you say, you know, that you love them, you know, that you still praying for them, you, you know. Then if you see them, you know, on the side of the road with a flat tire, you know, just try to help them out or help them out. Okay? But then, but then that same love is, you know, like we we're talking about domestic violence and you know all that stuff. It don't mean that you bring people back into a life of a certain relationship, you know. You can still, you know, look, uh, you know, care about somebody's well-being, you know. But, but you know, like the old folks say, you know, some people that you may have to love is your with a long handle spoon, you know? And I think that maybe that needs to be clarified. Mm -hmm. Because some people say that, mm -hmm. but, you know, it's like the bottom line is, like you say, if you see them in need, you're going to fulfill that yeah. need because Jesus did. I mean, I mean, the guy, the Samaritan, when he saw the Jew mm -hmm. on the road, whatever. Right. You know, he didn't allow what he felt of what they said about the Jews and the Samaritans, he felt from the best of person, even though the Jews had gone by already. Mm -hmm. You know, he was coming from We still, if we are who we say we are, or said we are who we say we are, we got to do what the attitude can do. We can't do how we feel like doing it. Yes. Yes. But like you said, you know, I have to reconcile, you know, the relationship and, and right. give so it's kind of it's, it's hard to do it from a from a perspective if you don't have the love of god in you but when someone has done you wrong and then you ask god to forgive them forgive you and all yeah and then ask god to bless them and then you have to turn around and bless that person right yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got a you know, I, I, I was single and uh, and, and, I, and I don't really, I don't want to get away off of it, but I was thinking, uh, and, and, I, and I understand unless you got the love of God in you, really, you can't really feel what you don't have. Yeah. <laughs> So you can't get it. Right. So just think about a couple that gets married and stays married for 50, 60, 70 years that neither one of them are saved. Right. So they don't have to know what God did. But they stay, they stay together, they represent their good people. But 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 what they have is it, it, it is real between them. It's real. But it's but it's but it's not it's not the agape love because it's not because they don't have God in their life, but they are or what they got. They got it. Okay. It makes sense. Right. But it's still not because you can't give what, 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 you, don't, what you don't have. Okay. So you, you, what they have, you can't say it's not real. Because it's, 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 it, it's zero. Or what do you want to call that, that, that type of love? Mm -hmm. uh, because it's, I mean, they're living for each other. You know, <laughs> a greater love than no. You know, love doesn't mean you didn't like it, you didn't like it, you didn't like it. You know? Like I said, I don't want to get way, way out of here, but that's what was going through my mind. Who said that someone being together 50 or 70 years don't have the love of God in their home? Well, I, I said that you were saying. I said that. Oh, you're saying that. Yeah, I, I took that. I, I, I'm just saying that. Because she's <laughs> I mean, it's, 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 it's just like we we used to as marriage, we really was married. And I in in a Sunday school, a lot of yeah. people that don't get saved today, 70, 80 years old. Okay. He's great in mercy. He, he gives up all of this time that none of us are being aware. 
And he gives to me, he gives us the time to to know to to talk to you, to have you say get it right. And but someone who you know dealt with and I don't even say God is patient give us the time though, to get to know Amen. And then John is saying this, you know, he's saying that uh, if you don't have this love within you about forgiving others and loving others, that you have not yet started living for Christ. You may be trying to get there, but but it all starts with this living and loving Christ first. Because see, then that's the only way that you're going to understand this particular type of love. Because up to this point, yeah, you will love the people that love you. You will love, you know, maybe the people in your household, your kids and everything. Yeah, you'll love them. But then, but the other folks, you know, that really don't like you, the other folks that, oh, no, you don't have no love for, for, for them. Until something happened with you concerning Christ. See, this type of love that John is talking about. This is this godly love. Okay? Okay? Make it probably clear if we spoke in another language, spoke Greek the way it is. Mm -hmm. So if we spoke Greek and we were talking about a relationship between a husband and wife, we wouldn't even say the word love. We would say, What is that word? It's, uh, you said mm -hmm. we wrote, yeah, we wrote. So wrote. we wouldn't be saying love like we wrote you, right? I wouldn't be saying that. And then if I was saying friend, I would be doing the police. And if I was saying, talking about what that is, I would be saying a guy. So if we look at it that way, we're talking about different things. So if we spoke in another language, we would say different things. But because when they translated it, and they used, they said, okay, we're going to take this, all of these three different words, and we're going to make it, we're going to use the word love. But they really have different meanings. So, wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I don't think I'm Greek. <laughs> I wouldn't be confused. Amen. It, it in love, you know, simply means that even at home, you know, I know my wife loved me because, see, I know that she looked past some of my faults. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, um, yeah, and then pretty much that's seeing the big picture. You know, the God in you, seeing the big picture. You know, you look, you know, over some things, you know. Oh, he know no better. Oh, like, yeah, I know what I'm talking about. But, but love is not simply an idea for John. It is not an option. It's not an unreachable notion. You know, something like world, world peace or, you know, something like that. But for John, the life of the gospel in Jesus Christ means that love became real in its own existence for slightly because God has loved us. It ain't an option. It's something real. It's real. And rather, I mean, no. See, we can't spend so much time talking about, you know, how we can change the world. 
But because of this love, we are the one that change. And through us being changed, you know, that's how change happens. It starts with us. Have y'all often ask your people, why don't these people do this, do this? You know? But then if it's, it starts with us. Yeah, you know, in the book of Chronicles, it said, no, no, if my people will call by my name, will humble themselves and pray. You know, it, it starts with us. It starts with the church. It starts the ones that are called by God's name. Jesus' name, the Christians, the one who, that's where the change is supposed to start. Forgiveness is not optional if we're going to love like Christ. That's right. It's not, it's not optional. That's right. Oh, forgiveness. And forgiveness is not for the person you forgive. Forgiveness is for you. You know what I'm talking about? Because you're a replaying this thing in your mind every night about this person, what happened, and that person went on with their life, and you sitting there stuck with all that stuff. Forgiveness is for you. Amen? But we are the ones upon who the love of God has been poured out in Christ. We are the ones who have experienced God's forgiveness, fellowship, and provision. We are the ones who have come to know the blessing of God on behalf of the unworthy. For that is our own experience. To understand love, you see, you have to experience love. And when you experience God's love, it simply will blow your mind. Yeah. I mean, you will have encountered people that did some crazy stuff to you, and then you say, Lord, that's fine. You know, they just didn't understand what they're doing. Oh, that's just them, Lord. You know, just forgive them, and you move on. And something you can smile about. Years ago, you were crying about. Then you smile about it, and then you're laughing about it. Boy, that's so crazy, woman. You know, yeah. Then pray, uh, Lord, I pray that they come to your knowledge and change their life. Amen. But, but we are called to love. We are charged to love. We are told that we should love as the only worthy expression of the new life to which we have been called. Because if we do not love, John does not say that we are missing a special blessing. He says we are simply dead. We have not been regenerated by God unless God love flow through us. That's how you know you are of his. Wow. Wow. That's how you know that you've been regenerated. It's going to change your whole outlook on the way you view everybody. Then it calls you even doing your prayers, you know, to pray for, you know, the people in leadership. You know, you know, these people all on TV that you, you know, these legislators and all these people that's trying to do all this crazy stuff. Just, just start praying for them. Because that's what the devil wants you to do, you know, just talk. No, just pray for him. Let God handle it. The God could change, you know, uh, you know, something that, you know, you know, this thing you call on the inside. This heart. Amen. But we are called to that. 
And love is too important, too central, too elemental, and too foundational for Christianity, for any of that. Unfortunately, we still consider love to be optional. And when we claim we love one another, but not so deep down, we look down on plenty of people who do not act the way we act and would have them to act. We talk about others and condemn them by failing to measure up to all standards. Yeah. A lot of times we talk about people. Talk about, oh, they were this, I'll do this, or they should be doing this, they should be doing this. this. Hey, let's just pray for them. And sometimes that's a high call in there. Hey. Amen. Because the truth of the matter is, none of us measures up. Because anybody could have what I call a gang mentality on anybody. That simply means you can start pointing out, you know, the bad things you think somebody's doing and all that. That's in all of us. Like, a Mr. Wilson up here, you know, talking too long. A Mr. Wilson up here with the wrong lesson. Or, well, I, mean, I mean, you can find anything you want to find, you know, that you can look hard enough. But the, but, but the way God look, God look at our hearts and God look at our, our needs. Amen? So none of us measure up. We, we become too focused on ourselves. We become too concerned with how we feel when our expectations are not met. We, we become too ensnared by how we feel attacked injured, neglected, or despised by the action and words of other people. John said, it is no secret that the world around us will often mistreat or even hate us. In Jesus Christ, we have passed from death to life through God's love. Those who hate have not learned to live in Christ. Mm. And, and then, you know, that's why we always say that when someone first comes to Christ and get baptized, that that's the beginning. You got to learn to live this walk. It is a growing thing. You know? And, but, but those who hate have not yearn, learned to live for Christ. That's what it's saying. And if you're on the other side of this, and then, I mean, you have learned to live for Christ, and then when you see, see someone who have not made it there yet, that's when we have this compassion. Because the Lord knows they they blind. Yeah. So he, he or she had to receive that love that we talked about? 
Yeah. They still bent towards the Yeah, I've heard you use it once you about it, but whether they really are Christian. Yeah. They they accept the Christ, right? They've been well, oh you okay, you just yeah, yeah. Oh no, no, no. Oh, no. Just said we are father, right? <laughs> then you just say we father. But he was saying if you want a, a carnal Christian. I mean, but they failed. But everybody may be not get back up at the same time. Okay. Right? Like fall back, right? Like, well. Okay, go ahead. Okay. 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 Yeah. Yeah. And then I'm sure if 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 a person was a seasoned Christian or or we call a seasoned Christian or a a, a new believer in Christ, if their love of God is inside of that person, when that brother or sister fall, we should be some discernment or something about us. So we should be able to help them up out of this same love. Mm -hmm. If you pass by somebody, you got the means to help. And when they say, when somebody knock on the door and they want something to eat, you got bread to feed them, you send them away. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's what I'm saying. Okay. Not you, not young, not you know, the Christian, you know, that's the one who's the beginning. Yeah. 
Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. And um, uh, I was going to get to that in my lesson, you know, about that if you have the love of God in your heart, and then if you're around, you know, a lot of things going on in the world, you just start feeling uncomfortable. And that's the way you will know. You see, this ain't satisfying no more. You know, this, you know, then, and then that simply means that God is calling you back now. You see? Because those things that you thought that excited you and the things that you're doing with the people, you know, it just don't excite you no more. You feel out of place now. See? And when the journey starts back, that's when the stronghold is going to try to grab you then, okay? Circumstances are going to try to grab you. But I swear, keep walking, okay? That's right. Don't give up on God. Wow, where did I stop at? See, it is in God's love that we experience true love. This love does not measure others or place them in a category or of acceptability. This love has a wholly different character. It's not an emotion that makes us feel good and jittery all over. It's not a warm feeling we get when someone else comes to meet us or meet our needs. It is not an excitement that gives us any sense of power, control, meaning, or importance. It's rather a decision, a choice to focus on another person to see them in a new manner. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. But then... With but when daddy does something for another person, ooh, oh, yes. Lord, are you excited? Amen. Because, see, this type of love is not focused on yourself. It's focused on the other. Because the more you focus on other, that when God is focused on you. You see? What? Don't we serve a great God? The more you are praying for somebody else's deliverance, then what? God is working out your own deliverance. Wow. Things you praying for other people to have that you ain't, I mean, I mean, that in the back of your mind that you really want, but you ain't gonna say nothing about it. Guess what God gonna do? He's gonna work that out for you too. Man, can't nothing in this world even come close to that. Then when it's all said and done, he had prepared a place for you that your mind can't even imagine. Oh, my God. He'll take care of you in this world and then in the world to come. 
I'm saying this is agony because the scripture is there because he said, well, they say we both rejoice with those who rejoice and mourn with those who mourn and weep with those who weep. So we, if this love that you're talking about is operating in us, yeah. then we should be able to discern. And when somebody, a child graduated or score a church down or play a football, whatever, we should rejoice and be glad. And whatever they're going through, we should be able to be a side, be a side by side with them and go through what they're going through. Amen. Example, go ahead. We should, we should be able to, if, if it's operating. Amen. Boy, it's a good night. I know you know that God loves you, don't you? Without a doubt in your mind, don't you? Amen. That's right. And he loves you enough, he's going to take care of you too. Amen. Amen. But it will look upon them with the eyes of care, asserting their worth and worthless, but seeking to meet their needs as an extension of the way God had come to meet our needs. Amen? That's the way we look at it. All right. All right. But the love already within us is not about words. It is about power to change our perspective on the world around us. It is the present and life of God flowing through us to consider others as brothers and sisters. Mm. This love begins with God's capacity to care for others. As it takes root, it works out to offer care through us. It changes our hearts, minds, and attitude. It loves simply because God loves. In the process, the first to be changed are we ourselves. You see, it's just when we start focusing on others, you see, then that's when we change. You see? Amen. It changes our hearts, our minds, our attitude. It's simply because God love in the process, we change ourselves. If others should change, this is on secondary to the expression of love. Much before that, it is we who are to be transformed, I mean, transformed by God's love within us. The more you're praying for somebody else, the more you love somebody else, you know, to change and doing things. Guess what? You're changing yourself. But this kind of love John talks about here is the kind that gets up off the couch and does something. All right, we got a task now. We got a young lady that came here, and boy, hey, we got to grab her. Amen. Sometimes. And he said, Sister, I love you. Uh -uh. No. We got to, hey, we got to, hey, we got to take care of you now. All right. All right. It's the kind of love that sees a need and immediately acts to feel it. It's the kind of love that puts others in front of self. It's the kind of love that can act as a gauge of our commitment to Jesus Christ. It's the kind of love that Jesus himself exhibited when he was on this earth. Amen. How much time? Oh, man. Time right now. Amen. See here. And I know that uh, I'm going to read this, and it's something that um, everybody already know about what we call love. First Corinthians uh, chapter 13. He said, Though I speak with the sons of men and angels and have not charity, I become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. 
the gift of prophecy and understand all mystery and, and all knowledge. And though I have all faith so that I can remove mountain and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, and have not charity, it profits me nothing. Charity suffered long, and is kind. Charity envied not. Charity vaunted not itself, is not puffed up, does not behave itself unseemly, seeks not her own, it is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoices not in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Bears all things, believes all things, hope all things, endures all things. Charity never fails. Amen? Love never fails. And then when all these things pass away, the only thing that's going to remain is love. The only thing that's going to abide is love. Because that's where it started from, and that's where it's going to end. Amen. Hope. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then, re then remember, love ain't puffed it up. You know, that's if you do something for somebody, you ain't, you ain't got to tell the world. It things that I may do for people that I don't even tell my wife. Things she do, I know she don't tell me nothing. Okay? But it's all right. You know? You see? Because God put it on your heart and then you see a need and then you were able to fulfill that need or whatever, you know? You ain't got to say, oh, I did, did, I did. No. You know what I'm talking about? Amen. That's yeah, everything. Amen. So, tonight, we just talk about this love that we have within us. And it's the love of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Because this whole thing, this whole world was created out of his love. He loved us so much, he created us in his own image. You know, it just say that, you know, everything that God spoke and, you know, and put on this earth, he spoke and there was. But he loved man so much, you know, he said, uh, you know, hey, we got to go down and make this person. This is something special. You are special, wonderfully made. And when you understand how special you are to God and who you are, and as the man said, we talking about the book about what the man purpose is. You know, you got to understand, you know, the purpose, you know, that God intent for you to be right from the beginning. And that will give you so much clarity on everything else that's going on in your life. When you understand who you are and what your purpose is. Amen. This is my commandment mm -hmm. that you love one another as I have loved you. Sets that example for us first. We are already loved. Right. Amen. All right, y'all, well, it's 8 o'clock. Is that anything else? All right, y'all, let's stay. Let's stay.
Okay. Okay. All right. Praise God. <laughs> okay. So we're about to close out, but before we close out, we always have to, to give this opportunity. Okay. So you've heard the word and you've heard the word about love and how God loves us so much, right? Agape loves. I mean, he loves us so much. He, he sacrificed his only son. He gave his only son so that we could have a chance for eternal life. And you've heard that. And the important thing, though, that we want you to, to really pay attention to is that we need for you to receive that love and that we're praying that you will have eternal life. And the way to, to have an eternal life is there's only one way, and that's through Jesus Christ. So... If by chance you don't know for sure that if, if, if the rapture was to occur or it was your time, where would you spend eternal life? We'll give you an opportunity to know right now. You can know because the word says is all we have to do is we just need to accept him as our Lord and as our Savior. And by faith, if we receive him, if we repent first, we confess who we are, Right? And then we, we say, but I want you to come into my heart, into my mind, into me, and save me. And if by faith you do that and you believe it, he will come in. But you can't think it. You got to say it. Amen? Right? So if you say it, Lord, forgive me. I've been a sinner. But by faith, I believe that if I ask you to come into my life, Come into my heart and save me. You will. So right now, please come in and save me. And then by faith, I believe that I've been saved. In the name of Jesus, amen. Simple. You said that. It's a simple, right? And he's there. And he'll never leave you nor forsake you. He's there. Amen. And that's what we need to say hallelujah about. And then he's there, but somehow you, you kind of got caught up in the cares of the world. He kind of just was like that prodigal son. And it, all of this excitement, peer pressure, all of that stuff. And you kind of went back out there and you kind of turned your back on him. He never turned his back on you, but you turned your back on him. So all you got to do is turn around and, and come back and you're there. And he will, he accepts you back with open arms. You repent, said, I messed up. He forgives you because you know how he forgives. He forgives and he never holds it against you. He don't remind you of. You remember that time when you, he don't remind you. He's a forgiving daddy. Hallelujah. And I thank God for that because I think we've all messed up. But we thank God that he doesn't remind us of it. Amen. And last but not least, if you don't have a church home, the doors of our church are open. And we invite you to come in and be a part of us. For those that are listening, we are at 2015 Grove Street. So you're welcome to come see us. Give us a call, 601-638-9015. And we'll be there to talk to you. Our heart satisfied? Let's pray. Gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for your love. We thank you for loving us so much, Lord, and in and, and unconditional love. And we pray right now in the name of Jesus that we will be examples. We're your ambassadors, that wherever we go, we show your love. We operate in love. We don't fall to the right or to the left, but we just keep on that straight and narrow path doing what it is that you called us to do. We ask that you protect us from danger seen and unseen, that we hear your voice and not that of the enemy. And Lord, we just praise you right now. We honor you right now. And we love you back. In the name of Jesus, let us all say amen.
Amen and amen. Very good. Greetings, PFI. This is Bishop-elect Marvin L. Winans. It is with great joy and excitement that I announce Holy Convocation 2023. Holy Convocation 2023, Monday, May 22nd through Friday, May 26th in beautiful Detroit, Michigan. We are planning a week of powerful spirit-filled services. We will praise, we will worship, we will receive impartation and revelation, and it will be a convocation for the ages. We look forward to all of our PFI churches coming together. I am making a special request for each member of every PFI church to come and not only come to receive, but come to serve. Fellowship is our middle name. It is when you lock arms with your brothers and sisters that relationships are formed. There is a place for you at Holy Convocation, whether you sing, usher, greet, the list goes on and on. There is something for everyone to do. Sheets will be available during your meeting. I encourage everyone to find at least one place and sign up. Know that you will make your pastor proud and our fellowship strong when you attend and serve at Holy Convocation. God is going to bless you for your faithfulness. Thank you in advance for making next year's conference a huge success. Holy Convocation, 2023, Monday, May 22nd through Friday, May 26th in Detroit. Get ready for a powerful week, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here. <laughs>